<laughs> well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shot, the ZeldaDungeon.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from uh, Slay Angel. Nabby or Tattle? Nabby was sent by the Deku Tree, while Tattle has more of a background story with her brother Tail and, the fr and friendship with the Skull Kid. Well, um, I've never uh, really found Nabby annoying like everyone else, so I actually really liked Nabby. I thought she was kind of cute and interesting. I mean, she didn't really have much of a story, but she served her purpose, which was basically as a hint system, and I didn't find her too obnoxious most of the time, and I thought she was great. I think she had a good, added a good style to the game. Uh, as for uh, Tattle, I liked her too. She, she had a lot of wit, but I also found her kind of obnoxious because, frankly, she was incredibly rude. And, uh, but, you know, her story involvement was nice, so I honestly can't pick between the two. But, you know, uh, I'd like to know what you guys, uh, think. Which is your favorite of the two fairies? I mean, technically there are other fairies since then, but these are the only two f fairies, actual fairies of the entire series. So, you know, tell me in the comments. Um, Eric Shaw asks, In A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo, Link's uncle informs Link that Zelda is your... Then dies. What do you think the uncle was going to tell Link? Do you think he was going to say Zelda is your sister? Well, just know that you're actually talking to one of those crazy people who's still... Well, you're not talking to him. I'm talking to you. Whatever. Uh, you're talking to someone who uh, still thinks it's possible that in Ocarina of Time, Zelda and Link were siblings. Or at least it's a possibility. Well, not nearly definite. It, at least entertain it in the idea of a theory. Maybe not in any way a proven fact. Um... I think that, I mean, I always thought that was what he was saying because of that same reason, but um, at the same time, they did do a retranslation, and I believe that they basically said, Zelda is your destiny, if, I'm, if I've got my facts right. I haven't played the Game Boy Advance version and retranslation, but uh, I think likely that's kind of what they intended it as, or at least that's what they've changed it to, like they've overwritten canon. It's called uh, retconning, I believe, where basically you, over, you make a new edition of the series that overwrites previous information. And I believe, ultimately, that's probably what has happened. So, no, I don't think they were siblings, but they were... I mean, obviously Zelda's important to Link, important to his destiny, or whatever. Uh, Carlbot said, asks, What do you think is the best game to do a three-heart challenge? I can't decide which game would be best. Well, it depends on what you want for a three-heart challenge in particular. Um, if you want them to be harder... I would recommend uh, Majora's Mask, probably. Uh, that or Link's Awakening. I haven't done one from Link's Awakening yet, but that game was incredibly hard with all the hearts, frankly, for me. And also, Majora's Mask uh, is the one I'm in the middle of, and I'm stuck, so it's really hard. On the other hand, one of the probably the easiest games to do a Three Heart Challenge on would probably be The Wind Waker or Twilight Princess. So, if you're going to be doing um, a Three Heart Challenge for the first time and you want to work through the series, if you have any intention of doing the whole series as them, and you want to work like from easiest to hardest, I'd start with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, probably. Possibly Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, too. Phantom Hourglass wasn't too hard. I haven't done Spirit Tracks yet. So, yeah. Uh, funnest? I'm not sure. Probably would be around Ocarina of Time or one of the medium games would be the absolute funnest. I, but I was having fun with Majora's Mask until I got stuck on Twin Mold. Um, Isaac Daly asks, Hi, do you think there will be some kind of special edition for Zelda Skyward Sword? If so, what extra things do you think that they will include, or would you like to see included with it? Um, one thing is that the special edition stuff, like special editions to come with pre-orders, or like collector's editions and stuff, usually that's something that, you know, games do as a promotional thing, and it's usually done by high-end video game companies, not like the smaller ones. But at the same time, it's not exactly a Nintendo thing. That's something that most uh, other game companies do. It's become sort of a standard in the industry. But Nintendo has their thing where they, they come up with their own innovations and they don't follow everyone else's ideas. Now, so that's for that reason, I don't think they're really going to do it. Now, they probably have done it a couple times in the past. In fact, I believe they have. I mean, they've done it kind of with the Zelda games in, a, in, the, in uh, some of the re-release stuff later on. But at the same time... Um, as far as like pre-order deals, most of what they do is like what they did for Other M, which they released a little art folio to go with the game, and it wasn't anything too special. It wasn't a special edition at all. So I don't really think they're going to do that for Skyward Sword. What I'd like to see in it, uh, I never know what they throw in these special editions. Um, I'd like, I don't know, I have no idea. I don't know what, I'm not too familiar with the special edition stuff, so. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's uh, name at all. His first name or his last name, so I'm just gonna go with his middle name, and I'm probably still getting it wrong. Uh, Isa, 
Essa, whatever. Uh, so I was wondering about the whole hype about the picture with Link and the so-called embodiment of the Master Sword. Well before E3. Now that the Scoured Sword has been announced, I was wondering, how do you think that all those speculations about the image work with the info we have now? It seems as if everybody has forgotten that thing, you know? Well, uh, I think I've answered this a bit before, but I'll, I'll talk about it here again. Um, basically, uh, most some of the theories have actually been confirmed at this point. Uh, the, these are confirmed facts, unless Miyamoto is crazy, and he's, you know, lying to us, which, you know, not completely out of character for the guy, but um, <laughs> what we do know is that the girl in the artwork is the Skyward Sword. She's literally the sword that takes on a human form and talks to Link. It's an intelligent, sentient sword. And, uh, yeah. And we know that the sword is going to turn into the Master Sword at some point in the game, but it isn't the actual Master Sword to start. So, yeah, those few theories about Master Sword are kind of confirmed, although a little indirectly. That's probably why you don't... I mean, I don't know, it's a, it's a bit of information that not a lot of people seem to catch up on, but it was stated in interviews and stuff, so it is fact. Um, I.B. Ray asks, Since the Ocarina of Time and the Three Treasures are required to open the Door of Time with the Master Sword inside, do you think they will appear in Skyward Sword? Not at all, because Link possesses the Skyward Sword in, um, well, Skyward Sword, and he, uh, it's going to turn into the Master Sword later in the game, and it was the Master Sword sealed in the Temple of Time. It was the Master Sword that was a key part of Hyrulean lore. There was no mention of the Skyward Sword or any kind of transformation. In other words, I think there's no way that we're going to see the Temple of Time or anything like that. I'm actually skeptical we'll even, like, see a much Hyrulean civilization, and they were the ones who built that temple and stuff, so, you know. Uh, we could see that the, like, the, uh, the Deku Tree, uh, Jabu Jabu, uh, there was an Agoron equivalent, really. But we might see some of the origins of the three spiritual stones, though, considering that most of their owners were these big entities that, excuse me, um, these big entities that, um, well, they seemed like they were deities of some kind. Um, World Ruler 10 asks, I saw the ending of Ocarina of Time in the beginning of Majora's Mask, and I noticed that Link has a hero shield, no stuff from Ocarina of Time, and a horse. How does this all fit? Well, I don't think there's much to think about it. In some way, he acquired the, hero the uh, Hyrulean shield. It was only a gameplay thing restricting the child from being able to use it. Uh, he doesn't have all the items because he just he just doesn't because it's a new game, and he has the horse because the he just somehow got the horse. It's just a transition to the next game. There's not a lot of reason to put stock into it. Somehow he acquired it, and the lack of having items is because because they didn't want to put it in the new game. Yeah, there's not a lot to it really. Um, J569 asks, do you think they will use the Twilight Princess Skulltulas in the Ocarina of Time remake, or do you think they will be the same Skulltulas as they are in the original Ocarina of Time? Uh, I don't see any reason why they'd use a different game's design. They, uh, pretty much shown that the Ocarina of Time 3DS game is going to be pretty much the same game, it's just gonna have some slight graphical tweaks. Uh, in fact, the models seem to be a little different, but they're the same design, and the enemies will likely function the same, or else that would make the game very different. And, uh, you know, in Ocarina of Time, they don't have enemies that, like, duel you as much as, like, every single thing in Twilight Princess, which is what the Skulltulas there did, so I don't think that's gonna happen at all. Um, Navi12345 uh, asks, I guess Wizard have already answered this, but I still want to know. Why did Minna call Zelda the Twilight Princess? Um, uh, who's Wizard? Uh, anyway, uh, Zelda was, uh, she was the prin the princess of Hyrule. She was the ruler, but she was still the princess, I guess, until she married someone, I guess. I, I don't know Hyrule politics. Um... Zelda was the Princess of Hyrule, which was covered in Twilight. Uh, Midna chose to be ironic and call her the Twilight Princess, but really I think it was just thrown into the dialogue to kind of trip you up and think, oh, Zelda's the Twilight Princess. But, and not realize Midna was, because if you didn't have that trip up, actually it was sort of obvious that Midna was. Um, and it, maybe it was an attempt to mislead her, but I think it was just a word play in the dialogue, really. I don't think there was a specific reason for it in that sense, uh, but that's just me. Uh, mm. Uh, Colin Jones asks, knowing the backstory of Vati and Ganondorf, do you still think that they are still pure evil, or do you think that they have good in them? Well, I don't actually believe in realism, realistically, that anyone is necessarily, uh, pure evil, like there's no chance for good. I think, in general, evil comes from someone who is good or was misled down the wrong path. Um, 
a Ganondorf basically showed a human side in the Wind Waker, and it showed how he, like, his, uh, his power-hungry nature was born out of some kind of a jealousy of his people suffering and, you know, the people of Hyrule prospering. So he had some sort of semi-logical reason for being the way he was. He had this sort of, um, human side to him. He actually wasn't planning to kill Link in Wind Waker. He was being merciful. Whereas in Cloud Princess, he was just a monster. But that's like different ends of the timeline or whatever. Um, different splits. But um, Vati, on the other hand, he was a guy who's fascinated with the darkness in the hearts of men. So while he probably wasn't exactly evil to start, he became very obsessed with something that was evil. He became obsessed with evil, so he, I think he delved into a darker nature than Ganon did in a way. But Ganon is the stronger villain, and in games like Twilight Princess, it shows he's just turned into a complete monster. Um, MDudeCY24 asks, when do you think the next Skyward Sword trailer will be shown? Well, Skyward Sword's supposed to come out early next year, so either we'll get someone soon or shortly before it, but I don't see any reason why they'd release a trailer at this point. I don't think there's too many uh, conventions or whatever coming up. Or um, we might just not uh, see one at all, and they'll just release it. I'm not really sure. I don't know what Nintendo has planned. They have a pretty sketchy history with telling us what they're doing. Um... All right, last question. Legendary Sword asks, A lot of people condemn Twilight Princess as being simply a rehash of Ocarina of Time. Personally, I disagree with this statement because I think Twilight Princess has a lot of unique features, even though it certainly has many similarities to the rest of the series, like all Zelda games tend to have. What are your opinions regarding this? Well, um, all Zelda games do uh, definitely have similar traits to each other. That's undeniable. Um, they actually, ever since Ocarina of Time, and even before then, really, they borrowed from the same core ideas. And they've continued repeating them and stuff, and, you know, that's just how it goes. Small innovations are introduced, and, uh, you know, they add enough freshness for us to still appreciate the same formula. Now, I believe that with other games, they somehow came up with their own identity more than Twilight Princess did. I felt like Twilight Princess really did borrow off the uh, Ocarina of Time's identity in a lot of ways. But you are right, it did have unique ideas. In fact, the way I look at Twilight Princess is it wasn't that original overall, but it had a lot of tiny innovations that I think were really actually golden additions to the gameplay in some ways that just perhaps weren't followed through with enough. So I actually appreciate all these small additions. I just don't think, like, in the big picture stuff, they really changed enough to make it very unique. But, you know, that's not necessarily a horrible thing. Ocarina of Time was a great game. Um, Alright, that's it for this time, guys. Be sure to send more questions to the email address in the description, and later!